Welcome to CNN's Behind the Story. I'm Lauren Wolf, and I'm here with Steve Ritter, a senior correspondent in the Science and Technology Group here at the magazine. Steve recently wrote a cover story about a giant tire fire that started 30 years ago and burned for nine months. So Steve, you mentioned in your story that the, that the fire in Winchester um, wasn't the world's largest in terms of the number of tires that burned, and it didn't burn for the longest of any fire. Um, but it still had some unique properties to it, and, and so what, what is the legacy that has come from this fire? Yeah, that's right. This fire was, uh, at the time in the U.S., in 1983 when the fire occurred, it was about 10 times larger than any previous tire fire in the U.S., so that was one thing that was kind of interesting about it. But I think more interesting is it became uh, a Superfund cleanup site. It was in the early days of the Superfund program. So that in and of itself is kind of interesting too, just to see how the Superfund process worked, how a cleanup took place, and one that was successful. A lot of the Superfund sites are still active. They haven't been completed yet. So that was another interesting thing. And then also it prompted a lot of state governments to take a hard look at how they how they recycled tires. Steve, you mentioned in the story that the, the tire fire, there were seven million tires in this pile that burned. What, what were they all doing there? Well, as it turned out, in the mid-1970s, a lot of uh, landfills stopped taking tires because it was a problem to store them all. And so this gentleman, Mr. Paul Reinhardt, he had the idea that he would start a recycling operation, collect tires. So he, over the years, over about a decade, had collected about 25 million tires. Many of them were used for retreads and for other applications, but about 7 million of them were in too bad a shape to use for anything. So he just sort of stacked them up behind his house on his farm in, out in western Virginia. And he had the idea that later he was going to try to, to smelt them down to get uh, oil out of them. Uh, it's not exactly easy to light a tire on fire. How, how did this giant inferno start? Yeah, you're right. Uh, for tires, for example, you have to expose them to high heat for a period of time or to an open flame. And in the case of this tire fire uh, in Virginia, it turned out to be a pure and simple case of arson. This is the 30th anniversary of when this fire started, and uh, you know it's, it's sort of an obscure little story since it happened so long ago. How did you get interested in it? Yeah, I was doing some reading. I came across the story about the fire, and I realized it was 30 had happened 30 years ago, and I kind of started wondering, well, how does a big pile of tires get there to begin with, and then what were you know the environmental impacts of the fire? And I found out later that it became a Superfund site. So, Steve, your article was written in a really nice narrative style, um, and I had heard that you traveled out to Winchester, Virginia for this story. Did you go out there just to sort of fill in some of the narrative details for your story, or were you out there for another reason? Yeah, one of the reasons I went out to the fire is because I wanted to see what it looked like. I couldn't really imagine, you know, how, you know, what the terrain might have looked like, where the tires might have been piled up, where the fire, when the fire burned, you know, the tires got paralyzed and, and, and oil ran down this hill and into a stream. And so I was trying to visualize how this looked. Plus, I didn't have a lot of good information. So I went out to Winchester. I went to the local newspaper where they had written some of the original stories. And I met some of the reporters there. So the site where the fire actually happened has been, you know, rehabilitated for the most part. It's, it doesn't give any hint of, of its lurid past. How exactly did you track down the exact site where it happened? Well, when uh, I was researching the story, I was able to talk to a photographer who had taken some of the original photos on the first day of the fire. So he has sort of given me a description of where the fire site was. But I went out there and I had trouble finding it. And so I ended up getting finding in the, in the library, buried in stacks of paper, a topographical map with, a, with the site marked on it. And from there, I was able to look at that. I went on to Google Earth, the satellite images, and was able to zoom in on the spot. And then I went back out to the site later, and I was able to go to it and find out exactly where the fire took place. That's some impressive investigating and sleuthing there. So describe to me, now you've, you've found the site, what, what does it look like now? When I went out, um, 
I got there and the only thing really visible that you see from the old days is an old foundation and what looks like bricks that were used in the kiln that Mr. Reinhardt was, uh, had built to pyrolyze the tires. But other than that, it's just rolling hills covered with grass. You can't see where the fire took place. There used to be a pond there, but they removed the dam and the pond is gone. But the small stream, which they were trying to protect, is still there and the water looks nice and clean. Well, thank you, Steve, for sharing the details of all the sleuthing you had to do for this story. And thank you, the viewers, for watching.